praise the Lord. I just want to thank God on your behalf and uh, we thank God for the technology. I'm happy to visit you in your home with God's word. I just want to encourage you that you get your Bibles and get your notebooks and your pencils or your pens so that you can write something down because this is going to change your life. What we're going to share today is going to change your life for good. The word of God does not come just like that. It comes in a season for a purpose. And I'm convinced that the word of God which has helped me, which has worked for me, is going to work for you too. Now, the Bible says that we should defend the gospel as ministers of God. How do we defend the gospel? Whenever we hear the word defense, it makes people think that they should get some weapons, they should get some equipment to defend and to protect themselves. You don't need any weapon, you don't need any equipment, you don't need any gadgets to defend God's word. All you need is to help somebody who may be arguing, who does not understand, who is discouraged and think that the word of God is not working for him. All you have to do is that you help the person patiently explain God's word to the person so that the person can also receive the truth that you have received and has worked for you. Today I want to share something with you, a common example from the book of Isaiah chapter 3 verse 10. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 3 verse 10 that Say unto the righteous that it shall be well with him. Now, say unto the righteous that it shall be well with him. It's quite an interesting message or an interesting information. It's like if you're going through challenges, difficulties, and you don't know what to do, and all of a sudden, a man of God comes to you to tell you that, well, this is the message I received from God for you, and that it shall be well with you. The moment you hear this message, you are going to develop some hope and faith again. But the question is, if you will notice or if you open your Bibles with me, you will understand that I have only spoken half of the message. Because I said that, say to the righteous that it shall be well with him. And I stopped there. This is the problem that many people are facing. It is not said to the righteous that it shall be well with you. It says that say to the righteous that it shall be well with him. For they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Say to the righteous that it shall be well with him. That is good. That sounds good. But being well with the righteous, the proof they're going to have is that they're going to enjoy the fruits of their labor or of their activities. The blessings of God must not come upon you just anyhow it must come upon your activities so if you have trusted in God's word and you have quoted this scripture in Isaiah chapter 3 verse 10 on several occasions that it shall be well with you and that's what you are expecting and for 10 years for two years for three years for six months you've not seen any change in your life check how you've understood the scriptures and how you read the scriptures it shall be well with you and it didn't stop there. It says that for ye shall eat the fruit of your doings. Now, many of us take for granted our doings, our activities. Because out of our activities, we're going to have the results that we are expecting. So if your activities are wrong, you're going to get a wrong result. And it will not mean that the word of God is not true. But people are arguing. They are doubting if God's word really works. Why? Because they believe. In a saying of such nature, that say to the righteous, it shall be well with him. And it hasn't been well with him. Yes, he's the righteousness of God. He's living a righteous life, but it hasn't been well with him. Why? He has not taken care, or you have not taken care of your doings, your activities. Now, in Isaiah chapter 45, verse 2 and verse 3, says, I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight, I will break in pieces the gate of brass and cut in asunder the bars of iron. Verse 3, that is Isaiah 45 verse 3 says, And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches 
of secret places, that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which called thee by the name, am the God of Israel. These are great promises for us. But why is it working for somebody and it's not working for other person? Why has it worked for me so far and you're still claiming that it's not working for you? Two people will sit in the same class under the same professor. They will receive the same message. The message will work for one and the message will not work for the other one. Why? It's the way we receive the message, how we understand it, how we apply it, what we do with the message that we have received. Say to the righteous that it shall be well with him. Yes, it shall be well with you. But it has to be in line with your activities, with your daily activities. Saint of the living God, in the things of God, things does not work like magic. There is no magic in the things of God. Why? Because the creator, during the creation, he formed everything systematically. And this same principle has to work in our daily lives. If you get up and you hold on to God's word, you don't do any other thing, you don't develop yourself in any other way, you're not going to get a result that you're expecting. So you end up blaming God, you end up blaming the word of God. There is an assignment for us as ministers of God that we help people. We give them their, 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 their courage, the encouragement that they need again and to explain God's word to them in a way that will be practical. Hallelujah. Today I came to share some few points with you and I believe that if you have something to write, you're going to write those points down and go through it after this message and apply those points to your life. I believe that whatever has worked for me can work for somebody else too. Amen. Now, the Bible has spoken of God going before us, making the crooked way straight. He's going before us, breaking the gates of brass. He's going before us, destroying the iron gates. He's going before us, showing us the treasures, the hidden treasures of darkness. He's going before us, showing us the secret places where the wealth is. These are the doings of God. This is the role that God is going to play. This is the part that God has promised that he's going to do for you. He's doing it to prove to you that he is your God. He's doing it to prove to you that he has what it takes to supply all your needs. But the part that you have to play or your role is where the missing link is. Do you have your pens ready? Do you have your notebooks ready? Then let's get some points down. Now, if somebody should ask me, how does the word of God work for you? Or what have you done to have your life from A to B or from B to C? The simple information I'll give to the person is the simple information that has worked for me. One, how do you deal with the news that you hear every day. How do you deal with the news that you hear every day? In televisions, reading the newspapers, what goes around in your community, what goes around in your nation, what goes around in the world, how do you deal with it? I always encourage people that whatever you hear will have effect upon your life in one way or the other. So if the news that you are listening to is not helping you, Stop listening to them. It's as simple as that. Stop listening to them. So one, the number one point I'm sharing with you is that stop listening to the news if, it, if it's not helping you. The content of the news always has to do with either robbery, either rape, either terrorism, plane crash, or aeroplanes disappearing and stuff like that. Whenever you hear such news, your heart sinks. Whenever you hear such news, you get scared, traveling. Whenever you hear news like this, it makes you weary. So, stop listening to those news. 
Yes, somebody will ask that, how then do I know what's going on around me? If what's going on around you is not helping you to grow, it puts fear and bondage over your life, you better stop hearing them. Why? Because it may not let the purpose and the will of God happen in your life. Why? Because you've dedicated your time watching, listening to things that are not helping you. So your problem number one is the news. Not only the news, but many people spend time behind their television. Watching people to do what they love to do and they make money and you spend all your time watching them. It does not help you. So one, if you want to see things happening in your life, you check your activities. You don't spend too much time watching television, it will not help you. Number two, you take care of the days that God has given you. Make each day a wonderful day for yourself. The Bible says that this is the day the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in the day. Yes, it is the day that the Lord has made. You have 24 hours in the day. But ask yourself that if that is the only day, your last day on this earth, what will you do with your life? I believe that many people are sleeping, relaxing, taking things easy because they think they have time. But take this day that the Lord has given you as the only day that you may have on this earth and use it wisely. If today is the only day that you have and you're not going to have tomorrow, I believe that whatever you use today to do will be the most important thing that you need to do or you need in your life. Remember, we are talking about our daily activities because out of our daily activities, we're going to have the result. God has finished his, his part, his portion. You are going to work out your portion. And I'm sharing what has helped me, what has transformed my life, what has changed my life with you. You do the same thing and get this, the same result that I'm getting, or you get even better result than what I'm getting. Yeah, the number three point that you have to write down is that Find your sole purpose. Find the very thing that you love to do, even if you don't get paid for. What do you love to do? We are made up of, you know, we are people, we are human beings, and because of the image of God and the glory of God, we have a lot of talent. But out of all the talents that you have, there's one particular thing that you would like to do, you love to do. When you find things that you love to do, you do them without even thinking of making money out of those things and you end up making money from those things. When you find things that you love to do, you find your purpose and your fulfillment in life. Now, the hidden treasures of darkness will easily open up to anyone that is doing what he loves to do. If playing football is your highest desire in life, go ahead, do it. And purpose in your heart and in your life that in any field that you are operating, in anything that you want to do, purpose it that you'll be one of the top five best guys in that field. How do you get to that level? It is normal. No one is special than you. You can make yourself special. By becoming the best in your field, it simply means that do what others will not do in your field. If others are training, if others are equipping themselves, if others are spending one hour a day to do what they are doing you spend three hours and you do three times better than they do the number four point that you need to write down or i want you to write down is that everyone must have some sort of ritual that they do if you get up in the morning what do you do in the afternoon what do you do in the evening what do you do before you go to sleep what do you do you must have a ritual you can decide that every day you will spend 30 minutes to train your body to get yourself fit. You can decide that every day you brush your teeth. There are things that we do automatically. We brush our teeth, we wash, we, we, we clean ourselves, we eat. If we are not fasting, we eat every day. Now, one more thing that you can add to your daily activities or your rituals is you feed your mind with a very useful and helpful information. Education does not end. It doesn't have an end. If you left school five years ago and after leaving school, you've read nothing, you've studied nothing, 
you're not helping yourself. Remember, you are after a hidden treasure of darkness. One, it's a treasure. Two, it is hidden. Three, in darkness. So it will take somebody who is ready to be able to get hold of the blessings of God. The blessings of God does not come upon a person automatically. There are certain things one needs to do. Another thing that I want to share with you is that you got to run your own life like a movie. You run your own life like a movie. You run your own life like a movie. Now, I love film actors so much, not because of the things that they do, but how they've trained themselves to work effectively. The guy is not a thief, he's not a criminal, but he's received a script that tells him a role he has to play. So this holy person or this good person has to act like a criminal. What they do is that they learn their script until they are able to live it, until it becomes part of them. You learn your script and live it. It becomes part of you. What you can do is that, see your whole life as a movie, and you are the main person in the movie. Whatever be the case, however the, the movie goes, you're going to win. So you see yourself like somebody who is wealthy, somebody who has all the blessings of God in him, somebody who deserves the good thing, and see yourself like you are acting a movie. And in the movie, you are the great guy, the wealthy guy, you are the one that always goes about blessing people. You are the one that has all the blessings. You are the one that has the good car, the good home, the good family, good friends. You are the one. Now, if you are able to see yourself in a movie like this and start acting like that, that's exactly what you're going to attract into your life. Now, people will say that, well, the man is doing this or he walks this way, he speaks this way, or he has this confidence because he has money. No. He has money because he lives this way. He has money or he has all the things that he needs in the world because he walks this way, he talks this way. You don't get better because you have better things. But you have better things because you decided to get better. You learn everything that you need to learn to make yourself that great man in the plane or in, the, in that movie. And that's exactly what you experience in your life. So, don't let life run you. You run your own life. Don't let anything at all happen to you. You let things that you want to happen in your life. The sixth thing that I want you to write down is that there is nothing new under the sun according to the Bible. Everything that you want is in the system. Whatever you want to do, somebody has done it before. There's nothing new under the sun. So to make life easier for you, go and look for what you want, which other people have done already, and do the same. Learn from other people. So in this way, I encourage you to start building a library, especially in the area of your interest. If you are a preacher or if you are a pastor, build a library in that area. If you want to become a businessman, build a library in that area. If you want to become a very wonderful wife, build a library in that area. Because the library will help you to learn from what people have already accomplished. Yes, you haven't been there before. You don't know the road. You don't know the map. You need a navigator to get you there. Somebody has been there before and he has written down stuff. He has written how his journey went. He's written how he was able to get through it. So why don't you just go for it? And today in our time, we are so blessed with information. Every information that you need is everywhere. You can easily get hold of one. And sometimes you get it very, very cheap. So build a library, have your own library that you can be proud of. Get history, get biography, read about great men, read about people who have made it. If you want to become a president of a nation, get a book on how to become a president. Read about the things that president must do, must know to become a president, and you become one. 
People do say that, well, I'm a busy person. I don't have time to sit down and read. Almost every book that you can get, you can get it in an audio form. So if you don't have time to read, get a CD. The book that you want to read. If you can't find a book, get a CD. Or if you can't have time even to read the book, get a CD. You put it in your car. Whilst you're driving, you're listening to something. Whilst you're driving, you're learning something. Whilst you're ironing, whilst you're doing your garden work, you'll be listening to something. Whilst you're training on the field, running around, you can put it in an MP3 form and listen to it. Listen, gentlemen, there are a lot of things that you can do that will transform your life. And I'm bringing you this practical teaching. If you listen to it and practice it and do what I'm saying, you will get a result that you deserve or you are expecting. The last thing that I want to share with you is that you have to keep your eye on the price. You keep your eye on the price. What do I mean by you keeping your eye on the price? You see, nothing becomes difficult if you know what you are expecting. If you are expecting something great and you are paying a price or you are sacrificing and you know that what you are expecting is going to be bigger than the troubles and the challenges you are facing now. You have to be willing to pay the price. Life will become easy for you. You go through hustling. You go through strugglings towards the achievement that you want to have. But if you can keep your eye not on the struggle, not on the challenges, not on the difficulties, the mountains, the rivers, keep your eye on the outcome the fruits of your labor it shall be well with you your work will never be in vain the fruit of your labor is assured if you do the right things that you have to do so saints I want to encourage you that the days that we used to blame God is over why because you have all that it takes to make the kind of life that you want to have so number one thing that you have to remember is that do away with your television and then appreciate each day that the lord has blessed you and then also you have to you have to perform some rituals in your life you have to read something you bath every day read every day get new information every day is a ritual don't forget and you have to live your life according to the purpose that you have in your heart what you want to become you can become and what you want to become will give you the inner strength and inner joy as you struggle to become run your own movie your whole life you got to picture it put yourself in the middle and desire that you're going to be the one that is going to win you get your library either in books in kindle form in audio form and get closer to it and then you keep your eye on the price let me read Isaiah chapter 3 verse 10 again that say to the righteous it shall be well with him for they shall eat the fruit of their doings the fruit of their activities I want to assure you that it shall be well with you for if you will make these activities the things that I've shared with you to be your daily activity you will surely get what God has promised for you may God bless you and get yourself prepared for the next lesson that we're going to share. Be blessed. Amen.